Questions Podcast. My name is Pat Gallen. We welcome in a former linebacker, played four years here in Philly, currently the Eagles Director of Player Development, and he's an executive director of the new documentary that's about to be released. It's called Kelsey. It's about Jason Kelsey. Connor Barwin's here. What's up, my friend? How you doing? What's up? I'm doing great. Thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah, man. Thanks for, for coming in. Um, right off the bat, obviously, season starts this weekend. What's the – you get, like, the butterfly? Like, do you still get the butterflies now that you're – no longer playing does it still feel the same way no i do not no. but i do um you know b before s training camp starts it, it's weird uh like sort of the end of july middle of july like my body is on a a rhythm <laughs> yeah and i can just like look around in july and be like all right i'm supposed to be going to training camp. <laughs> right and so like it feels right when training camp comes and then i'm still on the same rhythm where after six weeks i'm like uh, that was about the right amount of time. It's time to play real games, <laughs> yeah. and so I'm, I'm I'm definitely feeling that right now. And you know, don't get the butterflies, but just as excited as always to you know, for week one. You know, it was great watching the game last night. Excited for Sunday. Yeah. Um, as director of player development, what does that entail? Like, what are you up to? Yeah, uh, we don't talk about Is that. It secretive? Like, can we? Tell it's you? a little bit secretive okay. because I think it's uh, you know how we how we started player development. I don't know six seven years ago. It's uh, not really, you know, a lot of people, everybody has player engagement. Our player development, I'll just say, is really more focused on our younger players, onboarding our, our players into Philadelphia, uh -huh. into the Eagles, and then a focus uh, on on-field development from the jump when they get there um, and trying to accelerate that development. And it's possible because, you know, Howie's leadership and, and Nick's leadership, I mean, Nick is – all about developing players, developing players. And that's not always the case in the NFL. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Nick came from a D3 background where you had to develop guys sure. in college. Um, and in the NFL, some teams don't because, you know, you got the college football system, you got free agency, you know, it sort of weeds itself out in some ways. Yeah. But that's not how Howie wants to approach it. That's not how uh, Nick wants to approach it. And so uh, I, you know, love what I do and really just focused on helping these guys get better uh, as quickly as possible so they're ready whenever they get their chance. Do you do you look at this like this is like stepping stone? Like do you want to stay involved behind the scenes in, in this sort of way? Do you see yourself more as a coach or like how do you Yeah, do you look I feel at like uh, I don't know. I'm just, you know, I was <laughs> well, trying to have a good day. I was trying to have a good day today. So far <laughs> it's been good. Next week, you know, down. next week I'll try to No, I mean but my, my focus is just every year trying to be really good at what I do and add value to the team and our players. And, you know, next year, I don't know what I'll be doing, but I do love what I do now. Like, I, I, I feel like I got the best job in our building because I get to work with the coaches. I get to work with Howie in the front office. I get to work with everybody mm -hmm. and still, like, work with the players directly. So I love my job. Take it one week, one season at a time. You said you fi find yourself, like, getting into the rhythm of the season. Do you still miss the playing aspect of it? Does that ever really go away? You know, I I don't think I miss it that much because I, I gave it everything I had. My body is in fairly good condition now. If I sort of overdo it working out now, I know. Yeah. And so, you know, when I watch these guys, I don't have the urge to go put a helmet on and run through somebody because I, I, I did that yeah. enough, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, now, I to be honest with you, like, we'll, you know, Super Bowl last year, yeah. You know, you would you miss like I would have loved to be out there and have that chance. You know, probably Sunday, the first game of the year, the first home game at the link. I'm like, man, this is these were these special moments. But um, I still cherish just my role and being there how I am now. Sure. Um, and so I, I don't miss it that much. Um, you are still very heavily involved in the city. Make the world better. Foundation um, was just at the concert. You guys put on a great show. It was fantastic. Um, but. So you were here for four years. You played in the league 10, ten right? So yeah. you played and started in Houston, came to Philly. Um, what is it, though, about this city that is so – like the magnetism that keeps guys here? Well, just to go out down memory lane a little bit how it happened, drafted to – you know, grew up in Detroit, Cincinnati for college, drafted to Houston, went and lived in Texas for four years. Uh -huh. I always thought, for whatever reason, it was important to live where you play. Um, and so I lived in Houston. I loved it. And then Kelsey, Selleck, all these guys 
sort of told me, man, Philly's a special place. Mm-hmm. When I became a free agent, came to Philly. And then, you know, the best four years of my career were, were statistically uh, the four years in Philly. It's when my wife moved in, in to Philly and we got very serious. She has a great job at Penn and Chop. Um, when I left after four years, I just knew I was coming back just because this is where we sort of put roots down. Sure. When Howie let me go, he said, hey, I want you to come work you know, work for us when you're done. Go play as long as you can and then come work for us. Um, but I think me and other players that have been here, and I, I, you know, I talk a lot about this to our young players when they come in, this is really the best place to play if you love football because you're playing for a fan base that deeply cares about what you do. Yeah. Like, and if you, if you love football <laughs> and you care about it a lot, it's really awesome to play in front of people, with people, with a city that, you know, cares as much as you do, or maybe sometimes cares more. Yeah. So I think that's what pull, pulls me back, pulls other guys back. And it's just an, I mean, and it's just an awesome city on the East Coast, yeah. <clears throat> um, which, you know, is, is big too. So, uh, yeah, I love being here, and that's the plan. So that's the plan to stick around long term here <coughs> and all that good stuff. That is Hit the plan. Here, yeah, yep. um, well, then to make the world better foundation, you started here. Yeah. Was that your first year? Yeah, yeah, in 2013. And just, again, like everybody does it differently. My four years in Houston, I watched players try to start stuff, some successful, not successful. Yeah. And when I came here, I was like, all right, I'm a, you know, I'm a little, I know how this NFL thing works a little bit. I've seen the good and the bad. That's when I you know, launched MTWV. And I've just been really fortunate to work with great people, partner with great other organizations, um, sort of stick with it, be committed to it, and uh, it, it continues to go on. I'm super proud of what we've been able to do. Uh, and look forward to what we were going to continue to do. Yeah, yeah. For those that don't know exactly, because you've kind of run the gamut with uh, what you've been able to raise money for, but specifically um, playgrounds in, in yeah. the city, which have sort of sprung up all over the place. So talk about that and, and what's to come. Yeah, so just the real cliff notes of it are I grew up a son of a police officer and city manager, and he really, I really grew up understanding the importance of public space in a community. Um, I grew up living at the playground. Like, that's where I was. Um, and if I wasn't in school, I was at the playground playing basketball or football. Sure. So when I got to Philly, I said, you know, I want to I want to sort of help rebuild playgrounds. I mean, every, every single person in the world agrees that kids should have a safe place to play. For some reason, we adults can't figure out how to make that happen. <laughs> yeah, right. Um but that's what we, we do. We raise money through the concert um, with partners, and we are committed to partnering with a neighborhood, so the people that live there and use that public space, to redesign and then rebuild uh, the, the, the public space how they think it should be. Okay. Um, so you're getting input from the people in the community. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a long process. Okay. You know, and now we're going to the 10 years. You know, in total, the four projects we've done, it's totaling up to $30 million. Um, we, we don't sort of helicopter in and, like, paint the court, sure. put on new backboards, and then go to the next neighborhood. We really, uh, you know, I, I have deep relationships with people in these neighborhoods that we've been fortunate to work with. But it takes time, but mm-hmm. we're committed to it. We think that, you know, makes a, a playground stronger, a community stronger. Um and we're going we're gonna to try to keep doing it, uh, you know, into the future. So I'm super proud of it. We're, we're finishing Bear Rec Center and Grace Ferry right now, which, okay. will, which will be, you know, the best rec center, community center that's been built in Philly in probably the last 30 years, Ever. which Ever, is incredible. Yeah. How, yeah. How, how far along? It should be done um, later this year. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it'll, it'll definitely have all the bells and whistles by next spring. Um, we'll see if we can get it done before sort of the, the everything freezes this winter. But the goal is sometime later this year. So is the goal for each one to be better than the, the last one? No, More not at all. No? Not at all. <laughs> no, no. The goal is for it to be what the neighborhood, what they what they want and what they need sure. is really sort of match match the, the, the community that the space is in. So the concert has sort of taken on a life of its own. I was just at the Dell. Uh, really cool. Alex G. Always. Yeah. Really cool show. Packed. Yeah, uh, it's the most people we've ever had through the doors, and we've you know we've had some big bands, so it's cool. Yeah, what's the, like the what's the dream? Have you already had that? The dream band, the dream act. 
Because the first was the first one, Kurt Vile. Yeah. First one was Kurt Vile. Okay. Yeah. First one. Do you was have Kurt. another like dream act that you want to bring in here that would uh? Blow the no, I don't. Out? You know, no, um, I don't. Um, you know, maybe like if Bruce Springsteen wants to do a show, <laughs> I mean that would be that would be pretty cool. Uh, but no, I mean I'm I'm. You know, Alex G was awesome. Japanese, so awesome. Always. Japanese Breakfast last year yeah. was an incredible yeah. show. Kurt Vile, uh, the first year, the war on drugs. I think one thing I find myself thinking about if we ever were to grow it was, you know, I early in my career as a music lover, uh, I used to go around to music festivals. Because, like, when you play in the NFL in the summers, like, you yeah. have time sure. to <laughs> do this stuff. So I went to Coachella a bunch. I went to festival in houston i went to Lollapalooza in chicago i don't know what other i went to a bunch uh and i would love to be a part of maybe you know, not a big festival like right. Lollapalooza, yeah but maybe like a three nights in a row okay and maybe a couple different venues like make a whole weekend out of it or you know something something bigger like a real festival yeah. uh you know and maybe there's an opportunity one big festival got shut canceled this <laughs> yeah, year so maybe we'll we'll figure something out in in, in the future but uh would love to do that just to just to get more people involved yeah. um you know and bring something special to philadelphia it's funny you mentioned that because my wife and i made it like a date night so we came to the pre-party you doing the podcast we yeah. were hanging out with everyone and jimmy eat world and manchester orchestra were playing across at the man yeah so we'd had a plan like we'll check tickets we'll see how much they are we got tickets for four bucks. So we did the pre show with you guys. I was yeah. hanging out with Spike, who's Spike Eskin's a friend of mine. Uh, bought the tickets, jumped over because it's a 10 minute drive right yeah. across the bridge. Saw Jimmy Eat World, came back, saw Alex G. And oh, Grace, that's, and that's like awesome. It. It, was, yeah. it was amazing. Yeah. And tickets, the tickets were four bucks. The fees were more than the actual tickets. The tickets for Jimmy Eat World were four bucks? Yeah, four bucks. Wow. Because we waited until the very last minute. Never okay, so the secondary market down. just yeah, dropped. Yeah, secondary okay. market dropped. So we made it. A, a fun date night but to the point is like you could do something with the dell the man like we have yeah all like i would cool love spaces right here there's like you could do a, a friday a thursday or friday at union transfer 1200 people where we first where we, we did our first four shows then you do 5,000 people friday night at the dell yeah. then you do 12,000 people saturday night at the man like it would just be that would just be awesome and it, i believe you know I'm always trying to find a way to like bring all this together. And if you do a show at UT, the Dell and the man, that's a lot of people behind the scenes in Philadelphia that normally don't work together, working well, together. So cool. And I love that. Like, I love that sort of working together to do something good for the city. Um, now it can get complicated, but sure. You know, I like figuring out well, hard problems. We'll see where it goes from here. Um, you're involved in a really cool project with your friend Jason Kelsey, documentary coming out on Amazon Prime. The premiere is tonight. It's being taped on a Friday. Premiere is tonight, right? And then the, it will be yeah, so on we're, TV. Yeah, like it's like a movie Monday. premiere. Yeah. You know, so we're doing, you know, red carpet, the whole so, thing. 350 people will watch it for the first time together in a theater mm -hmm. tonight. Amazon will get a bunch of content, I'm sure. And then it is available you know around the world you know starting tuesday i think how to come together yeah so the quick background was you know i've known kelsey for almost 20 years uh you know i went i went started uc in 05 he started in 06 okay yeah. um and so <laughs> we played together it's like 17 or 18 i, I think right yeah, i don't know I think so. um 18. and long story short two years three years ago he said he was started thinking about retirement now there's like the fourth year in a row, but I thought <laughs> I thought he was serious, and he and he ha, he I bet had he thought that too. <laughs> oh, he for sure yeah. did, and he had played long enough um, that had seen guys do well and not do well in the retirement, and Kelsey, being a very thoughtful person, was thinking about what was next for him, mm -hmm. and also thinking about. You know, is, was there anything, if he were to, like, make a film about this, would it be helpful, right? Because no one, no one sort of figured it out. Right. Like, what is the big issue with guys transitioning out? 
and so he said to me like maybe we do this and i was like you know first of all you're usually pretty good with ideas so let's do this so you know we started interviewing a couple people in the industry we eventually uh got to know don and sheena from 914 pictures which is a local filmmaker here in philadelphia and we started filming so two years ago we started filming kelsey away from the building uh luckily he didn't retire <laughs> yeah. and we sort of were like well let's just keep filming and and then last year happened and then we you know the season was coming to an end and don and sheena said to me and jason like hey I don't know if you guys want to keep doing this like retirement thing. Yeah. And this Don's talking to me. I'm like, Hey, I don't think he's retiring. If he's playing <laughs> this good, we might be filming well. another year. And just, this is going to like, just keep on going. And Don was like, I think there's something really special here about a guy, a family, a city and sort of what it takes to be, to be great. Yeah. Um, and all the people behind the scenes sure. to sort of make this whole, this whole thing go. Um, and so when the playoffs started, after the NFC Championship game, we our crew was filming him at Chickie and Pete's when he was watching his brother. Yeah, yeah. NFL Films, you know, their job is to b document the league. Yeah. So they show up because they're like, you know, this might be a Kelsey Super Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> so they realize, like, they got to start filming yeah. the Kelsey family. At that point, you know, and – Shout out to Keith and, and Pat and Jessica, everybody at NFL Films. They were like, hey. Well, we were like, hey, we've been filming them for two years. And they were like, oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> we well, got all well, let's uh, get yeah, together yeah. and see if we can do something. And NFL Films was unbelievable. Keith and that crew and then Don and us put our heads together, made this movie. You you know, I'm, I'm sort of learning on the fly. We went and we sort of pitched it to all the networks. Yeah. And then Amazon was like, this is amazing. We want to we want to we want to put this out there on our our platform on Amazon Prime, and uh, now everybody will see it on Tuesday. It's it was crazy, it really was, and I'm super excited for. It. I'm super excited for Philadelphia. Like it, it is really cool uh, how Philadelphia comes off in this in this film. I was sort of gonna be. This is a good segue because I feel like we know Jason. Like he's like the big brother of the city of Philadelphia now. Everybody knows him. Everybody's got a story about him. Or um, but is, is there something in this without giving away the film, but is there something here that fans will learn about Jason that maybe we didn't already know? I would say for the fans here, yeah, there's, 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 there's moments that no one ever gets to see. Like I was talking to my dad last night and about the film and he was like, he, he experienced all those moments as my father after the game, mm -hmm. a loss, uh, you know, what happens on a Monday and Tuesday at the house, you know, when you're watching stuff on TV about your kids. Like, and so he all saw that, but the film, we have all those moments. We have Kelsey and his family three hours after they lost the Super Bowl with his little girls. And it's like, oh, like, it's, I think it's going to be crazy for people to see that sure. and just how real it is. Yeah. But I think at a high level, people that know Kelsey, everybody knows him. Yeah. And if the <laughs> film is just him being himself. You'll see for people that don't know his wife. Oh my God. I was going to say how much she's a star <laughs> and it's great. Cause she did not, she wanted nothing to do with it. I really? remember three years ago, we're talking about, she's like, I'm not getting involved. You guys could do this. I don't want to be involved. And me and Kelsey were like, okay, yeah, but we're, no we're going to have to get, <laughs> I mean, it's going to happen. Yeah. Kylie, if we're filming your, your husband at home, you're going to be in it. Um, and she, so she's great. Uh, but yeah, no, it's cool. And the, and the thing was fun for me is when we would pit, we, you know, we did a little pitch with HBO or whoever it was, I would get a random text or an email from somebody that from, you know, I don't make it, I don't remember who would like say on HBO side yeah. that would sort of text me like, man, that was awesome. I live in north carolina and i wish we had we, i wish we had a community like that sure. you know what i mean like people that are outside of philly you know on the west coast or wherever that saw it were like man that's crazy that's what that's what it's like yeah. living in that city and rooting for this team it is. and we're like that's it's that's legit. what it's like it's legit, man. so i think that's gonna be fun for people to, to see outside of this region this might be like super cliche but do you jason's like it's like the real life rocky in a sense right 
he's not coming from like nothing, but you know, a sixth round pick, barely misses a. When's the last time he's missed a game? It's been like a decade. Uh, wins a title for the city. Has this amazing. Hey, listen, speech wait on the, to, wait, on the art I, museum steps. It's like beyond, beyond amazing speech. I yeah. mean, maybe the greatest maybe sports of speech of all maybe time. Of all I mean, I'm but not. All these things, like, yeah, he's like the epitome of our city, like in one it's, guy. It's in the film touches on this a little bit. I mean, there's a lot of narratives, but. And this is him and every how he goes about his life, but like he is perfect for Philly. Yes. Like it is a, yes. he's perfect for Philly, and he creates that. Like he made it perfect yeah. with who he is. But yeah, I mean he was he was a walk on. Yeah, he came from you know hum, this humble, normal, working class Cleveland Heights, Philadelphia. Yeah, sixth round pick. His brother I played with. I mean the whole family. His brother. Had you know, I don't know when he was drafted the second round. A bunch of people passed him, but he mm-hmm. got kicked out of our on our off our football team. Like, it is like a little bit of a, yeah, a real life there. Rocky story. And you know, I don't. I mean, the film he, he's happy with it. It's weird for him having a film be about him and his family. Yeah, so I you know, when that. he talks about it, it's sort of. Put in, but I can say, I like he's gonna get even more loved here and ev- yeah, if it's if it's even possible like it, you know what yeah. i mean it's 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 people are gonna love him even more it's a i think fair man with that guy it's yeah it really is and then the out al- the christmas album you guys are working on a set part two right christmas album is done oh it's done it's done it's locked it's getting manufactured i'm way ahead we're way ahead of it ahead of uh than we were last year last year you know the you know people that didn't get the the, the record i apologize we've ordered a lot more of this well we'll see we've yeah. ordered a lot more and um they will go on sale right after Halloween. So people will be able to pre-order. Okay. November 3rd is the plan to put out the first single. Um, you can pre-order up until Thanksgiving, and then the, the online store will open on Black Friday. Okay. Uh, and the idea is people don't care about this, but just, you know, vinyl takes a long time to produce. Yeah. That's why a lot of people don't do it anymore. Um, so we have to put in a number, you know. So if you want to make sure you get it early November, put in your order. Yes. Because people do care about that. Yeah. They want their hands so, on that thing. It was on yeah. the secondary what was it selling for on the secondary market? It got a little crazy for a, a bit there. I think there's still a couple grand for a couple we're going for a couple thousand dollars on <laughs> eBay and stuff. That's nuts. But that hey, that speaks to Jason and, and is it Saint Jordan, Jason, Lane, same same group? Yep. And then we got we doubled pretty much doubled the amount of music on this one. Oh, uh okay. Patty LaBelle's on the record, Amos Lee's on the record, Waxahachie uh is on the record. So Are uh, you on the record? I'm not. Get on the record. I'm not. Is it Charlie Hall still? Charlie Hall produced the whole thing. Cool. Nick Krill, producer, engineer, master, did it all again. Tons of uh, Philly musicians all over it. So Love it. it's like a big, it's like a big uh, community of Philly. Very cool. On this record. Before we go, one more time, where can people see the documentary? Amazon Prime Tuesday comes out. Um, watch it. Let us know what you think. I hope Philadelphia is proud of it. Um, I'm proud of it. Um, can't wait for everybody to see it. Philly will be proud of it. I'm sure of that because I'm a Philly guy. I can say that. Kinda yeah, there's only one. It. There's only one thing. I, I mean, they still we still lose the Super Bowl, which is yeah, a, which I is a, you have to. That that's a little bit like you have to. I I watched the movie probably like six or seven times at the end. Don, who made the movie, he, you know, probably watched it fifty. I don't know how many times. He still he said every time it still hurts watching the end of that game. Um, so just prepare yourself for that. All right. Thanks, Pat. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate you. Yep, thanks.